What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel and the video review of the MJX B2W, the Bugs 2 Wi-Fi brushless RC quadcopter ready to fly with altitude hold and GPS. Now this quadcopter is set to have up to one kilometer control distance, brushless motors, you got the independent ESCs, two-way communication, one key return to home, and half a kilometer distance on the Wi-Fi image transmission. And it comes in black or red color to choose from. So let's go ahead and open up the box and check it out. All right, we got the quadcopter and the remote control out of its box. And let's just go over what else that comes in the box. You got the wall plug charger for the 2S battery and you have a phone clip ball and socket joint phone clip here and you also get a bag with some uh, prop removal tool there screwdriver and some bushings and of course you get the instruction manual a quick start guide and some bugs stickers and you also get a extra set of props as well all right, guys, before we start taking a look at the quadcopter, it is a sweet looking quadcopter with the brushless motors. Um, let's talk about the GPS. Well, it has three different types of return to home uh, functionality. One of them is the one key return, or they call it the smart return to home. And that is this button right here, return to home button right here. Now, while the quad, press it once and the quadcopter will return back to the last recorded home point. But while it's traveling back to the return to home point, you are able to guide the quadcopter to avoid obstacles. That is fantastic. And while it's flying back, you are able to press the return to home button one more time and regain control of the quadcopter and go about your flying. So that is fantastic. There's a second return to home in which it is called a fail safe return to home. And this is when the signal is lost for more than six seconds and it will trigger the return to home. And the fly control system will take over the control of the aircraft and fly back to the last recorded home point. Now, in this mode, while the quadcopter is coming back and you regain signal of the quadcopter, you are able to hit this button one more time and regain control of the quadcopter as well. Now, when it does not, and it requires a seven GPS or more to have this functionality. Now, when it does not have seven or more GPS locked in, well, what it will do, it's, it will trigger the return to home, but it will not fly back to the uh, recorded home point. It will just land in its spot. All right, so be careful with that. So make sure that you have more than seven GPS locked in for the return to home fail safe to work. Now there's a third return to home and it is the low voltage return to home. In this mode, you are not able to hit the return to home button to regain control. Now, this is a little tricky. Now when the quadcopter has two bars of uh, battery power on the, uh, the quadcopter itself and the distance is more than 300 meters or the altitude is more than 100 meters uh, it will go into fail safe uh, battery low voltage and it will return to the home point now when the battery level just indicates one bar and the altitude is more than 15 meters and the distance is more than 15 meters it will trigger that return to home point and come back to the uh, recorded home point and land in that spot. But if you are within the 15 meters of altitude and 15 meters of distance, it will just land in that spot, okay? Which is fantastic. Now let's take a look at the quadcopter itself, all right? Uh, taking a look at the motors, the motors are the brushless kind of motors. Thank you very much. And these are the 1806, 1800 kV motors. Okay. So 
and it also has a dual bladed uh i measured these props and they're seven and a quarter inch props and also the escs are said to be uh lightning fast independent escs so those are fantastic escs as we have seen in the other bugs uh three and the bugs six and the bugs eight now right underneath of the motor pods there's these landing legs as well as the led lights there's red and green led lights uh, internally and the landing legs have these little rubber pods at the end rubber grips so when it lands you will stick that landing as well now taking a look at the battery the battery bay is in the back and it has one of these types of proprietary batteries looks very familiar as the mjx bugs three battery but it has attached itself to this little cover now what i've done was i've unscrewed these screws here and this back cover comes right off but um and i tried to use the uh bugs three battery it is the 7.4 volt 1800 25c lipo battery and uh try to use the bugs three battery which is the same size take a look at that it is exactly the same so you are able to use the bugs three battery in this bugs two but it goes in and it slides right back out so that's what i've experimented by taking off this cover to see if i can push this in and use just this cover to hold the battery in place while well, that will not work guys this battery has the power cable coming off the the center of the battery so as you can see there's nothing on the two sides but the bugs 3 battery has the power cable coming off from the side so therefore i am not able to use the cover to cover the battery cover all right so what i've done was uh i just kind of secured the uh the uh balance charge plug here with some tape so it doesn't flap around and I put a little foam piece and I just kind of taped it so it's kind of flapping so you are able to shove this in and just kind of squeeze the side there for the foam and it does hold it in place so you are able to use the Bugs 3 battery in this Bugs 2 W all right all right now let's talk about the Wi-Fi FPV now the camera here is the HD 1080p. I still have the cover on. Let me take that plastic cover off so I get clear videos. Uh, it is the HD 1080p 5G Wi-Fi camera. Now you can download the MJX Bugs Go app in the App Store to do your Wi-Fi FPV. And the image transmission on this baby here is in 720p real time image transmission with zero latency all right and the control distance or the image transmission distance is 400 to 500 meters so that is fantastic i have never seen a wi-fi fpv go that far of a distance the only one that we see do that is the dji phantom series all right so now let's go ahead and talk about something else and that is the remote control. Now, taking a look at the remote control here, it is the same thing as the other Bugs 3, the Bugs 6, or, and the Bugs 8 remote control. But this one is completely different, guys. There's the lock and unlock button. Uh, you hold it for a couple seconds, it will uh, lock, and you down press it, uh, a short press it will unlock or arm the motors and disarm the motors all right this is the one key to take off and one key to land button here is the rth button the return to home button there's the camera button here and short pressing it will take a photo and long pressing it will take a video now let's go back to the quadcopter here and take a look on the side of the quadcopter here there is a micro sd card slot in which I have inserted already a micro SD card. Now, so this is an onboard DVR, similar to the Bug 6 and the Bug 8. So now we are able to take photos and videos and record it directly into the DVR, to the micro SD card slot from the remote control. Now, 
This one is also a Wi-Fi FPV unit. So you have the Wi-Fi app with the phone app. Now, when you have the micro SD card inserted, uh, it will record directly into the micro SD card. But when you don't have the micro SD card inserted, it will record itself into the phone app. So that is fantastic. You have two different ways of recording your photos and videos. So that is just fantastic, guys. So now, looking back at the remote control here, it has the headless mode, push it to the right, and it is headless mode on, push it to the left, and you are out of the headless mode. These two buttons over here, uh, it does not have any functions. It does not even move. So those are just uh, no function, uh, buttons there. I'm not sure, but it does not have any trim buttons on this thing. So uh, you need to calibrate it on a level surface before each and every takeoff to have nice uh, stable flight. Okay, this button over here is the GPS on off button. Hit it to the left and there's no GPS and they call that the gesture mode. Uh, hit it to the right and you turn on the GPS. Now there's a lot of stuff going on inside the display. Let me go ahead and show you here. If you can see that, there is the height, there is the distance, there is the signal strength, and there is the GPS uh, on and off. So I can turn the GPS off, I can turn on the GPS, and it'll show you the amount of GPS that you have acquired. There's the TX battery level and the RX battery level, and there is a photo icon. When you take a photo, the photo icon blinks. And when you down hold it for a couple seconds, the video icon will turn on when you are connected. And there's also the headless mode icon and the return to home icon on the remote control. All right. Now to calibrate the quadcopter's gyro, bolt sticks to the bottom and to the left will calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter so each and before each and every flight i recommend that you do that now in order to bind the quadcopter to the remote we'll go over this once i start get getting going here but what you want to do is turn on the remote control while holding this red button and it'll put the remote control into the binding mode and at which time you will shove the uh, battery uh, into the quadcopter it'll turn on the quadcopter and it will bind and then after that you will need to do a compass calibration you will need to wait until the um, the quadcopter acquires uh, more than seven satellites and you will do a compass calibration dance which we will go over now in order to change the uh, mode of the remote control now there's mjx has provided up to four different modes on the remote control uh, while the quadcopter is in a calibration uh, signal connection state, they call it, you can down press the return to home button for three seconds. And at which time uh, each individual uh, press will change the mode and it will show right here what mode you are in. There's mode one, which is the right hand throttle, uh, mode two, which is the left hand throttle, and then there's also the mode three and then the mode four, which I cannot comprehend. All right. All right. There's also the phone clip. Uh, they are supplying this phone clip, ball and socket joint phone clip, and it's very easy to put on here. Uh, it is spring loaded with a little uh, notch on the inside so what you do is put it on the antenna just push it down and it clicks into place and when you want to remove it just pull on this little uh, knob right here and you are able to take it back out okay so just listen for that click and it is clicked onto place and you are going to just put this ball and socket joint right inside of it like so i think that's pretty much stuck on there and it is able to take a iPhone 6 Plus here so let me grab my phone I got my iPhone 6 Plus and you are able to hold a pretty big size phone so that is fantastic guys all right guys we got the quadcopter and the remote control ready to go so now we're gonna go ahead and do the binding process all right so what you want to do is hold this red button down and turn on the remote control it'll send it into the binding mode where the green light is flashing so what we're going to do now is insert the battery into the quadcopter and just like that the light 
on it is solid now solid green light and it sent out a beep now it is bound now you have to do this just once the next time around you don't have to do that anymore now there's a couple of beeps now we are into the calibration mode now what we're going to do here if you look at the bottom lights over here the light is flashing here and light is flashing there alternately all right the front light will flash and then the back light will flash and it is light green in color you can't really tell right now but it is light green okay so what we're going to do is do the compass calibration here so bolt uh, turn the quadcopter horizontally once twice and three times and at which time the light on the bottom is a darker green and it is flashing alternately but the color has changed to dark green and at which time you will go nose down and do a rotation three times with the nose down all right and when you have finished that take a look the light is solid green now it is not flashing anymore the light in the front here is red in color as well so I don't know if you can see that it is red and the rear lights are solid green and at which time you are ready to take off and if you go to the remote control now we have acquired 16 oh uh, it just went down to 15 oh went back up to 16 15 here so we acquired 15 solid satellites so now we are clear to take off but first we're going to do a calibration of the gyro so bolt sticks to the bottom and to the left and the lights flash rapidly and it goes solid all right so we have calibrated the gyros of the quadcopter now we are ready to take off we're going to use the one key to take off and one key to land all right so let's go ahead and press that oh we have to arm the motors first both sticks to the bottom and in we'll arm the motors and i believe by holding the throttle stick all the way down it will disarm the motors now bolt sticks to the bottom and out well that doesn't do anything all right so bolt sticks to the bottom and in arms the motors and when you want to disarm the motors hold the throttle stick all the way down will disarm the motors all right now one key arm and this arm is with this red button as well so short press it arms the motors and long press it with the throttle stick all the way down will disarm the motors all right so now you can see that uh, the throttle stick is bouncing to the middle it has altitude hold all right so let's go ahead and arm the motors by pressing that so you don't really have to hold the throttle stick all the way to the bottom here okay now let's go ahead and hit that one key to take off one key to take off by itself and it is holding position right at this level here nice and we have gps assist so check that out man it is hovering just in that spot nice right this thing does not have any speed control so there's no high and low speed here you are just stuck with one speed and as you can see when i make that turn it has that gps uh, rock and roll there you see that there you go here one more time I'll show you the remote control too. forward pitch let go and it has that GPS rock and roll and it is holding uh, altitude as well as position all right so if we push it it comes right back to that spot check that out nice huh that's GPS for you let me pull it away and let go and it goes back to that GPS position awesome awesome now let's check out some of the functions of this quadcopter man this is one nice looking quadcopter man first let's take a photo it took a photo and the camera icon did a little flash there as you can see there hopefully you can see that turn it around take a photo of the right side all right turn it to the left take a photo now let's lift it up a little bit and 
go ahead and take a video. Okay, now the video icon is flashing. So let's go cruising. So this is fantastic. You don't have to have the Wi-Fi phone app installed and you can take photos and videos. So this is the first actual Wi-Fi FPV quadcopter that has dual recording functionality independently. So that is fantastic. Man, this thing is flying very, very stable. Really, really nice. I let go and it's hovering right at that spot. Awesome. Not bad at all. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera or the video. Okay. Now it is telling me that I have a height of 8 meters and distance of 14 meters. And I still got 16 GPS locked in. And the signal strength is absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to bring it in here and check out that RTH function here. So let's go ahead and land it right in this spot right here with the one key to land. Okay, automatic landing. A little bounce and the motors shut off. So now we're going to take off from this spot right here. So this spot is the new home point. So what I'm going to do is draw a X and we're going to take off from the X. All right, MJX. All right, so we're going to arm the motors one more time and we're going to take off. And that is the auto hover altitude. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go up a little bit and send it out right around there. All right, now let's hit that return to home and see if that works. All right. It's rising up in altitude and it is starting to come back towards this location and it is hovering right on top of the X. And it's taking its time coming down, but it's relocating itself right on top of the X. Check that out. And now it's starting to descend. Okay, let's see how close it gets to the X. Now the Bayang Toys X16 did fantastic. It was just about one and a half quadcopters away. Well, this one is off by around, there's the X. This one is off around three or four quadcopters away. Now, since I have landed in this spot right here, this is the new home point, okay? So I'm going to mark an X in this home point right here, and that will be the new recorded home point. So let's go ahead and take off one more time here, and arm the motors, one key to take off. Not bad. Okay, so I sent it out way over there. All right, now what I'm going to do is hit the return to home one more time. Okay, now it's coming back towards me or it's rising up in altitude one more time. And at which time you are able to guide the quadcopter? No, not really. That's not working. Oh, it came back all the way over here. Well, it says I could actually guide the quadcopter, but you know what? That did not work. So maybe I need to go further out. All right, it's hovering right on top of the X, taking its time, relocating it, and then it's starting to make its descent. 
All right, all by itself, guys. So let's see how close to it it gets to the next, uh, the second X home point. All right, coming down. And it has landed itself. And the motor shut off. Okay, let's inspect the X's. Okay, this was the first X home point here. And this was the second home point here. It missed it by twice as much. So about eight quadcopters distance. All right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is mark this as the new home point. And we're going to check out the uh, fail safe. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the fail safe functionality. So let's go ahead and arm the motors one more time and one key to take off. Okay, I'm gonna send it out way over there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the remote control and see if it come back, comes back to this new home point here. Okay, so let's go ahead and send it out. I'm not gonna send it out too far. All right. There it goes, it's hovering right around there and what we're gonna do is turn off the remote control. All right. So it should uh, trigger the fail safe return to home. Six seconds guys, check that out. It's rising up in altitude. So after six seconds of no communication loss of signal, it will trigger the return to home, the fail safe return to home. Check that out. That is absolutely fantastic. No, you cannot lose this quadcopter, man. It is hovering, it is taking its time checking out the location and when it is happy it starts to descend there you go descending okay X marks the spot there's the new spot now it is missing the X oh by somewhat one more time okay where is that X the new X was did i mark the new x okay that was the first x second x and i believe the third x was right around here huh or did i mark it no maybe not maybe i didn't mark it okay there is the x i couldn't see that x right here it was the third x we have missed it by around seven or six or seven quadcopters here so the fail safe loss of signal works fantastic it just missed it by that much so he, it has a margin of error it is not as accurate but that is accurate enough now let's see uh, what I can do here is uh, turn on the remote control and check that out the motors turned on by itself nice so what we're going to do now is i'm going to hit that return to home button while the quadcopter is flying back towards me with that fail safe return to home so i'm in the motors once again and taking off that is the new home point but we're not really gonna be testing out the accuracy anymore what we're gonna do is send it out i'm just gonna send it out way out there all right so i'm gonna hit that return to home function okay let's see what it does it is in a safe altitude so it's not rising up anymore it's just coming back i'm gonna hit that return to home button again and it stops the return to home process and i have regained the control nice 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 awesome awesome smooth flyer guys very smooth this is a nice quadcopter man it actually makes very smooth turns check that out I can't wait until I check out the uh, Wi-Fi FPV and the distance not bad man Nice quad, nice quad. Okay, so we're gonna send it out again one more time. And this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna trigger the low uh, or loss of signal 
fail uh, fail safe function and I'm going to turn off the remote control and I'm going to regain it as in mid air I'm going to turn it back on to see if I can regain the signal and take over the controls all right so turning off the remote control so it should trigger the fail safe return to home loss of signal after six seconds all right and at which now it is starting to come back I'm going to turn on the remote control one more time and I got signal and I hit that return to home button and I have regained control of the quadcopter awesome that is fantastic MJX man they have gone from toy quadcopters now to a bit more sophisticated quadcopters here this is a really nice quadcopter man and you got that onboard DVR 1080p awesome awesome all right so what we're gonna do is go ahead and land it and I can't stop flying it because it's so smooth it does not have that GPS rock and roll on the turns look at that I'm making very nice smooth turns so what we're gonna do here is since I got a lot of battery life supposed to have up to, up to 20 minutes but they uh, recommend that you fly about 15 to 18 minutes okay I don't want to send it out beyond 300 meters uh, maybe I'll do a 100 meter when the battery gets a little bit low but we need to uh, deplete the battery somewhat and send it into the uh, LVC mode so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take some uh, photos now took a photo there and check it out there you go took another photo turn the quad take another photo take a photo of the trees behind me take a photo uh, take a video again all right it is taking a video so let's see what the quality of the video is like while I'm flying around Wow, it's got a lot of distance, guys. I can barely see the quadcopter. Okay, now it is beeping. It is beeping. I'm not sure if I'm losing signal or the battery is getting low. It looks like the battery is getting low. So, it should start triggering a return to home. 
I believe it is right around maybe more than 100 meters here. So hopefully it does that. I'm still recording video. Let me send it up higher. All right, let, let me send it up even higher. And the altitude here says, I can't really see it. It's 62 guys, 62 meters. So let me send it up even higher. I don't think I'm supposed to be flying so high over here. It's way up there. I cannot even see it. And it is recording it as 102, 101. So it should start a return to home. Yes, it is. It is hovering and it has made itself towards right on top of me. So right after it reaches above 100 meters and the battery level indicator uh, is stating two bars, it will function, fun, uh, start uh, triggering that uh, low voltage return to home. And I believe it is on its descent. Hopefully it makes it all the way down here. All right. I'll just hold my remote control. Yeah, it is slowly making its way down. I can hear it now. Okay, let's see how close it gets to the new home point or just whereabouts right here. We'll be fine. Now it is a low voltage return to home. I cannot take over the function. I cannot press the RTH and regain control. So hopefully it doesn't land on those fence posts. It is coming down. All right, right here, nice. You know what, this time I think it came even closer to its original marked spot. Nice! Awesome guys, so you cannot lose this quadcopter man. Nice! 
let me go ahead and turn off the video here okay we got it uh, I can see there is still two bars of battery so what we're gonna do is test out the 15 meter uh, greater than 15 meter distance or less than 15 meter distance uh, once it goes down a little bit more so go ahead and arm the quadcopter that is the new home point okay so we're not gonna mark it let's go ahead and take off oh look at that check that out we were within the 15 meters so automatic landing all right so there you go and it is beeping solid beeps now all right so that is the low voltage fail safe return to home function as well as all of the other return to home function of the MJX B2W the bugs to Wi-Fi All right.